While the ancient Romans certainly were skilled builders, the hype surrounding Roman concrete is overstated. It's said to be incredibly durable and long-lasting, but is Roman concrete truly as great as the hype sets it out to be? There are many reasons to explore that are pretty fascinating. Reason number two especially caught me by surprise. But let me start by telling you about the first reason that is quite obvious. The ancient Roman Empire is renowned for many things, including its impressive architectural feats. The Colosseum, the Pantheon, and the aqueducts are just a few examples of the engineering prowess of the Romans. One material that is often credited with making these structures possible is Roman concrete. Roman concrete, also known as Opus Caementicium, is a mixture of lime and volcanic rock called pozzolan that is said to be incredibly durable and long-lasting. In recent years, there has been a resurgence of interest in Roman concrete, with many claiming that it is superior to modern concrete in terms of strength and durability. However, a closer examination of the evidence suggests that the hype surrounding Roman concrete may be overstated. The first thing to consider is the fact that many of the ancient Roman structures that we admire today have not stood the test of time as well as we might think. The Colosseum, for example, has undergone extensive restoration and repair over the centuries. Meanwhile, the Pantheon has been rebuilt several times since its original construction. Even the aqueducts, which are often cited as examples of the durability of Roman concrete, have required significant repairs and maintenance. Another thing to consider is the fact that the Romans did not have access to the same technology and materials that we do today. Roman concrete was made by mixing lime and pozzolan together by hand, which would have been a labor-intensive and imprecise process. Modern concrete, on the other hand, is made using machines that can precisely control the mix of ingredients, which leads to a more consistent and reliable product. Additionally, modern concrete can be reinforced with steel or other materials, which can further increase its strength and durability. It seems, however, that Roman concrete has the ability to repair itself. Yeah, that's right, it can heal itself. This is because of the poorly hand-mixed concrete mixture, which does not blend the quicklime well enough for it to react with water and harden. In other words, it causes larger lumps of quicklime to settle in as pockets in the final hardened concrete. What this results in is that when the concrete has started to age and form cracks, Rainwater enters these cracks and reacts with the pockets of quicklime that hasn't been hydrated. The quicklime hardens and strengthens the crack from further developing. This results in excellent durability that we haven't managed to recreate. It's also worth noting that the Romans were not always using the same type of concrete. Some structures are built with a different kind of concrete called opus incertum, which is made of rubble and small stones and not as durable as opus caementicium. Furthermore, Roman concrete was not always used in the same way as modern concrete. For example, Roman concrete was often used as a facing material rather than a load-bearing material. In other words, it was used to make the surfaces of structures look nice rather than to support the weight of the structure. It's important to remember that the Romans did not have the same understanding of engineering and material science that we do today. They may have stumbled upon a recipe for concrete that was durable, but they did not have the same level of understanding of why it worked or how to optimize it. However, this is not to say that Roman concrete is completely without merit. In fact, recent research has shown that Roman concrete may have some unique properties that make it worth studying. One of the most intriguing properties of Roman concrete is its ability to harden underwater. This is due to the fact that the lime in the concrete reacts with seawater to form a special mineral which is extremely strong and durable. This property would have been incredibly useful for the construction of harbors and other maritime structures, and it's something that modern concrete cannot replicate. We do have ways to do that though, but not with the same materials. Another property of Roman concrete that is worth mentioning is its low carbon footprint. The Romans didn't have access to the same fossil fuels that we use today, so they had to rely on other sources of energy. As a result, the production of Roman concrete would have been much less carbon intensive than the production of modern concrete. This is something that's becoming increasingly important as we work to reduce our carbon emissions and mitigate the effects of climate change. 
Additionally, some studies suggest that pozzolanic ash used by the Romans in their concrete might have a beneficial impact on the environment by absorbing carbon dioxide. All of these properties suggest that there may be something to learn from Roman concrete, and it's worth studying further. For example, scientists are currently researching the properties of Roman concrete in order to develop new construction materials that are both strong and sustainable. Some researchers are also looking at ways to replicate the unique properties of Roman concrete in modern concrete in order to improve its strength and durability. It's important to have a clear perspective on this topic, as the use of Roman concrete is not the panacea for all construction needs, but it might have some unique characteristics that could be exploited in scientific construction scenarios. And it's also important to note that the study of ancient techniques and materials can give us a deeper understanding of our own practices and potentially new solutions. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know what you think down in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one.